Hello guys, my name is Puad. <coughs> I want to tell you about some morphological rules, uh, some morphological lesson called rule productivity. Productivity. So before you guys, before I continue this lesson, uh, I want to explain a little about suffix and prefix. So for example, take a look at this word, unbreakable. Unbreakable is a, a, a word from break and then combined with prefix and suffix. So pref prefix mean awalan, pre, able mean akhiran. I mean, I mean suffix mean akhiran. Jadi ini kata awalan, ini kata akhiran. Break itu verb. Now take a look on this. The suffix able can be combined with any verb to derive an adjective with the meaning of the verb and the meaning of able. For example, accept. I sorry sorry. Accept is a verb combined with able. It means accept acceptable will change into an adjective. Accept accept plus able will change into an adjective. It means that you are. Uh, you are able to accept passable you are able to pass breathable you are able to breathe lovable you are able to love changeable you are able to change adaptable you are able to adapt and so on so the productivity of this rule is illustrated by the fact that we find a bell affixed to new verbs such as downloadable and flexible jadi uh, rule ini itu diilustrasikan dengan fakta bahwa kita menemukan kata kata able-nya ini kata able-nya ini ma uh, masuk ke kata verb such, such as download such as fax. Jadi download itu beras download table itu beras uh, apa rules ini itu berasal dari kata kayak downloadable gitu. Oke okay, next. The prefix, the prefix "un" derives some class words with an opposite meaning, such as "unafraid," "unfit," and "American." So, this "afraid" it means that you are scared to something, you are scared to someone. But if this "afraid," this uh, this word combined with "un," it means that this word will change the meaning into an opposite, into an opposite. For example, "unafraid." It means that you are not afraid, unfit. You are not fit, an American. You are not an American. So additionally, an can be added to derive adjectives that have been formed by morphological rules, resulting in perfectly acceptable words such as such as unbelievable or unpickable. Jadi uh, kata an itu bisa dimasukkan juga ke adjektif yang berasal yang 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 sudah dibentuk oleh rules morphological gini ini kan uh, for example believable this word is uh, formed by morphological rules so the un rule I mean the un rule can be added into this word such as this word pick up pick capable you can you can uh, you can uh, add un rules into this word and then this word will give a perfectly acceptable words for example unbelievable jadi kat, uh, artinya itu lebih perfect unbelievable luar biasa unpickable uh, unpickable tidak dapat dihapus jadi memperkuat makna yet un is not fully productive happy and unhappy Quarterly and uncowardly, but not said and unsaid, brave and unbrave, obvious and unobvious. So this word is, this word is an example word that, uh, cannot be cannot be add to un. I mean, uh, un rule is cannot be add to this this word, and there is more. Then is a, a ton of word that cannot be add into un rule. Uh, it appears that the unrule is most product productive for adjectives that are derived from verbs such as unenlightened, unsimplified, uncharacterized, unauthorized, 
undistinguished uh, kayak contohnya gini nih undistinguished asalnya kan formnya itu distinguished ditambah ed berubah jadi kata adjektif terus si an ini masuk bisa masuk karena karena asal adjektif itu asalnya dari kata verb baru bisa dimasukin ke an rata-rata kayak gitu mostly most productive lebih apa ya lebih inilah lebih kuat gitu it also appears the most accessible an words have polysyllabic base basis and while we have unfit uncool unread and unclean many of unacceptable unforms have monosyllabic stems such as unbig unread unread unsaid unsmall untold jadi uh, most of them most of them uh, the unword is accessible on the word that have one syllable uh, i mean the word that have uh, more than one syllable for example happy happy have two syllable have and be so the un can added into this word not said brave but obvious is uh, kayak pengecualian gitu gitu emang ada emang ada kata-kata yang bisa dan tidak bisa dimasuki but most of them is rata-rata dua syllablenya and then yang kalau yang monosyllables yang cuma satu such as unmake angry unread unsaid and small and unsolved Uh, it's it is not acceptable to to unforms. Jadi ya apa? Ada juga yang enggak boleh gitu. Gitu. Next ER. It is used to produce a noun meaning one who does is a neurologically productive morphological rule giving us such as examiner, exam taker, analyzer, lover, hunter and so forth. but fails for productivity owing to unwords like terror which is not one who cares other derivational morphemes fall farther short of productivity so er is to give a non meaning such one who does for for example lover the one who does love hunter the one who does hunting exam taker the one who does take an exam exam take an exam so er is to give a uh, non meaning one who does uh, the people who doing it who doing it uh, okay next so when a verb is derived from a noun even if it is pronounced the same as an irregular verb the regular rules apply to it example noun ring is known but ring is also can be a verb and when the ring is a verb the ring is mean that and circle so for example we say the police ring the bank with arm armed men not rang the bank with armed men because uh, because this verb is derived from a noun so this verb is from noun ring So it must the regular rules apply to this verb. Next, so making compound plural to make up a, a singular word become plural word, simply adding s as in a girl. S, for example, girlfriends, boyfriends, laptops, and etc. But a compound. There is also a compound. text an irregular from example footman i am sorry sorry footman is footman not footman's or i mean footman's or fitman or fitmin fitman <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry okay next lexical gaps Ex- lexical gaps or accidental gaps are wall from but non existent words the actual words in a language constitute only a subset of the possible words speakers of a language may know tens of thousands of words dictionaries as we know it include hundreds of thousands of words all of which are known by some speaker of the language but no dictionary can list all possible words because it is possible to add the to, to add to the vocabulary of a language in many ways because it is possible to add to the vocabulary of language in many ways this is the, the key 
So lexical gap is just like in Indonesian. Uh, santuy. Santuy asalnya dari kata santai. Jadi kayak kata-kata yang di di diselengkan karena sed, adanya sedikit uh, gap situ, perbedaan yang sedikit itu makanya di selengkan gitu. Next. Other morphological processes. A new word may enter the language because of an incorrect morphological analysis. For example, pedal was derived from peddler on the mistaken assumption that the ER was the agentive suffix. So, jadi awal itu pedal itu enggak ada. Cuman sebenarnya pedal itu ER-nya itu bukan suffix, bukan kata akhiran. Ini satu satu kata ini enggak ada kata akhiran, ini itu benar-benar murni kata. Cuman karena kesalahan asumsi sebagai kita, sebagai kita yang morphological analysis ini jadi menyangkanya ER itu tuh kata akhiran padahal bukan akhiran. Jadi pedal itu sebelumnya sebelumnya itu enggak ada, cuman karena salah asumsi ininya morphological analysis jadi ada gitu. A number of new words have entered the English of lexicon in this way. Nah, yang kayak gini contohnya yang kebanyakan yang masuk itu. Such words are called back formation. So this process is called back formations. For example, verb hawk, noun hawker, stroke, sto- uh, stoke, stoker, swindle, swindler, edit, editor, and many ways of them. Next, some compounds that have been introduced fairly recently into English are Facebook, YouTube, and many ways. When the two words are in the same grammatical category, the compound will also be in this category. Noun plus noun girlfriend. So this is noun, of course. Fighter bomber. Noun plus noun. Fighter noun plus bomber noun. Jadi ketika ada kata noun yang ditambah noun satu itu, mereka masuknya noun juga. Girl, girl, girlfriend. Uh, apa? Asalnya girl plus friends. Paperclip. Landlord, mailman, and many ways. Ad- and adjective also. Adjective plus adjective become adjective also. Ice cold, red hot, worldly wise. But in English, the rightmost word in a compound is the head of the compound. The head is the part of a word or phrase that determines its broad meaning and grammatical category. Jadi kalau misalnya ini nih, noun plus adjective. Jadi yang jadi head of compound itu adjektif kata keduanya, kata keduanya. Jadi ketika kata, kata keduanya adjektif, maka ininya hasil akhirnya adjektif. Contoh ini kan head itu non. Strong itu adjektif, tapi ini head strong itu maksudnya jadi adjektif karena part of headnya itu adjektif. Si strongnya ini nih. And verb plus non of course. Jadi big pocket itu kan kita tahu kayak apa kayak maling lah apa pencopet pencopet nah pick itu kan verb pick picking pocket itu kan non cuman kalau disatuin ini hasil akhirnya jadi non itu karena head of the compoundnya itu is is a noun not an verb gitu next so the meaning of a compound the meaning of a compound is not always the sum of the meanings of its part a blackboard may be green or white because as we know blackboard uh, from our mindset blackboard is a black but it's not always a blackboard other compounds reveals other meaning relation between the parts which are not entirely consistent because many compounds are idiomatic about house It's a house for both, but a cat house is not a house for a cat. Nah, you get it, right? Jadi, uh, kompon yang lain juga nggak selalu sesuai dengan relasi antara partnya itu. Ini bot house nih. Bot house is a house for both, but cat house is not a house for cat. Karena rata-rata kompon ini sifatnya idiomatic. A falling star is a star that falls, but a looking glass is not a glass that looks. You get it? It also happens with an eating apple, an apple that eats, and laughing gas does not laugh. Okay, next. Last, toilet surprises. 
Ansel Green collected errors made by her students in vocabulary building classes and published them in a book called Look. The creativity of this student is illustrated in the following example. Uh, there's a word decide uh, decide was, but students make a definition able to make up one's mind. Long VT students definition is being very tall, for three toes. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, for three toes. Well protected, gubernatorial, gubernatorial to do with peanuts. I don't know why, but this is some something that miss morphological analysis too. That's Amsel Green uh, collected arrows uh, by, made by her student in a book called Pulet. Okay, maybe that's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, bye.